a little bit confusing to, to start out with, but I'm going to try to walk you through it as simply as I can. There's a, a few basic rules. Um, you can work 70 hours in an eight day period. Uh, you can drive 11 hours a day, and you can not drive after the 14th hour in that day. Uh, after the uh, after that 14 hour, you have you are have to mandatory take a 10 hour break off. So usually how I do it, you know, if I drive my 11, I'm going to take 10 hours off, and then I'm ready to drive another 11. So you, you'll see how it goes here. So on this day, we were. We were already driving here for about four days, but we started out in a sleeper. We had at least 10 hours because we're going to 1015, and at 1015 we did our pre-trip in Olancha, California. We did our pre-trip, uh, so we go down to on-duty not driving for that pre-trip, which takes a minimum of half an hour, and then we started driving. You don't put a tag for where you start driving because you're still at that location. So we're driving, driving, driving for about two hours. And at two hours, we were arrived at Kramer Junction. We did a safety inspection, and I'm trying to read through the camera, I believe I went to the bathroom. I usually do that because just for the safety inspection, you have to do it every uh, uh, 300 miles or every three hours or 200 miles every three hours. I forget. Um, if you're hazmat, it's less. You have to do it in the first 25 miles, and I believe it's every 150 miles or, or two hours. But I'm just doing normal various freight here. So we went in. We went to the bathroom. So we're uh, so we go up to line one off duty. We went up, went to the bathroom, came back, got in the truck, and drove. We're still at Cramer Junction, so we don't put another flag there. And we drove for about another hour and a half, hour and three quarters actually. And then we arrived at Rancho Cucamonga. We arrived. And then we went off duty because once you arrive to the uh, shipper, you know, there's usually nothing to do until they get your truck in. So we were waiting, waiting, waiting. So we were off duty. We're not getting paid for that. Um, I made it there before my appointment. Some places will pay uh, detention pay if you get there on your appointment time and they delay you for any more than two hours. So anyway, I was there for about three hours. And so I went driving again. Um, and I started from there so I don't flag it and I drove for half an hour and then I decided I'd stop and I'd eat dinner. I ate dinner inside the, the sleeper so it was sleeper birth time uh, which still counts towards your off-duty time. Then we came down we arrived in Oter uh, Ontario I'm sorry yeah Ontario where we did a drop and a hook and we ate dinner and then we we drove over to a different spot in Ontario where we fueled up the truck. You have to show on duty not driving for at least 15 minutes when you fuel the truck. And then we went driving, driving, driving for uh, three and three quarters hours where we made it to Prim, Nevada, where we did our post trip, which is essentially your logbook here. And then we went off duty. And then this is how it added up for the day. I had four hours off duty. Uh, ten and three quarter hours in the sleeper. I drove, actually drove the truck for eight and a quarter hours. Uh, I was on duty not driving for one hour and it should, that has to add up to 24 hours. If it doesn't add up to 24 hours, you did your math wrong. And then what you do, you add uh, lines three and four, which is eight and three quarters hours and one, which should be nine and a quarter hours. Hours work today. This is where a lot of people get confused, is this line right here. You put in the hours that you worked yesterday, the day before that, which is seven and three quarters, day before that, nine and a quarter, day before that, nine, and then the zeros are days that I didn't work at all. And that all adds up to the total hours. Total hours minus 70 equals the hours I have available to work today. The hours working today is not just driving. You have to add in lines three and four, which would be uh, nine and a quarter hours, which I worked today. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Uh, well, before I do that, at the end of the day, you need to sign the vehicle is in satisfactory condition, and you sign again here. Uh, that is the very last thing that you do, the, do to the page. Just before that, you go up and you get your mileage for the day. If you're the only driver, the driver miles and the team miles should match. If you're not the only driver, then your driver miles plus your co-driver's miles will add up there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the page here. Okay, next day, 4-3, this is the very next day. Um, 
I only had one trip. I, I essentially went from Prim, Nevada, all the way over to Palisade, Colorado. Um, I drove uh, nine and a quarter hours. I had a half an hour where I did my pre-trip. I'm not going to take you through um, all the off-duty sleeper driving and on-duty time. If you want, you can pause your your browser as you go through this and see how I did it. Um, but what I want to do these pages for is we add up here that should be nine and three quarter hours. Yesterday that we did nine and a quarter. Um, remember we we ended up in uh, Prim, Nevada last night. Well, now that goes to yesterday. The eight o'clock got bumped up. Seven and three quarters got bumped up. Nine and a quarter. Nine. Now you'll notice we only have two zeros. So now available for today we only had twenty six and a quarter hours. Flipping the page, you'll see how it goes down. I I think I messed up my math there at one time, but uh, you know our nine and three quarter hours for yesterday bumped up. You notice there's only one zero now, which means we only have seventeen hours we can work for today. Going on to the next day, our nine hours that we worked yesterday bumped up, and you notice there's no zero at the top. So every day, the you know the previous day get bumped up, bumped up, and bumped up. So today we only have eight hours that we can work, not just drive, but work also. So you got to figure in uh, if you're going to do a drop and hook, uh, your pre-trip, and the amount of driving you're going to do. Okay, now we're on to four six. I believe this is the last day that I have for you guys here. Um, our hours for for yesterday went to the bottom here, which were eight hours on the dot. We worked exactly as much as we had. Uh, which gave a total of 61 hours. Uh, 61 minus 70 equals 9. We can uh, work a total of 9 hours today, both driving and uh, on duty not driving combined. And we ended up driving 6 and 3 quarter hours, um, 1 hour on duty not driving, which gave us a total of 7.75 hours. We didn't go over. And now for tomorrow, I don't have that here, um, but uh, but that'll get bumped up. So you can see, as soon as you as soon as you start getting close to your your seven days on the road, um, you know that the zeros will, will will start disappearing there and start giving you hours back. Which one of the questions I had when I was in training is, okay, you use up your seventy hours. Do you have to have a thirty-four hour reset? Because if you're off for 34 consecutive hours, you get a fresh 70. It doesn't matter what you did before that. Everything's all zeros. You have 70 hours you can work today, and it all starts fresh. Uh, the answer is, at that eighth day, when you had that first day drop off, bam, you get that many hours back. You don't have to take uh, 34 hours off, which a lot of people, I believe, um, you know, understand that you do. You don't have to automatically take... Uh, uh, take 34 consecutive hours off. It helps because then you don't have to count hours so closely and then you can go like a bat out of hell again, but a lot of times um, you know, you're not doing 550 or 600 and you know, whatever miles a day uh, so, so you don't need 11 hours. So it all depends how they're dispatching, how they're running you, how the freight's like. Um, so hopefully I, I, I answered a few questions that you had on logbooks. Um, Go ahead, if you have more questions, leave it in the comments section and I will answer specific questions to the best of my ability. Hopefully there's some more experienced guys out there. Uh, I know there there's a guy on YouTube, Sean, I don't know how you pronounce it, S-E-U-T-H, Sean Suth, Eskimo Sean, I think he goes by. He's got a logbook video that's really good. Actually, all of his videos are really good. He's got a great one on uh, on chaining the truck. But, uh, but if you guys leave comments, I will try to answer uh, the specific questions in a future video. Thanks for watching again.